All right, I'm gonna give everyone like two two more minutes just to download Max. If you haven't already, download the the uh, actual workshop, which is a zip file in the chat right now. Um, just download it and zip it. It's really small. Um, we're gonna be going through that together. And if you happen to have a second computer or monitor, um, it's it's gonna be really helpful. Part of the, the so one of the advantages of doing things this way. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, one of the advantages of doing things this way with Max is everything I gave you is, is fully interactive. So you're going to be looking at the exact same thing that I'm looking at. Um, and you'll be able to, to click on it, hack on it, keep it for later, copy stuff out. Um, but the, the downside of that is if you're trying to do it while I'm doing it, um, it might, it might get a, a, a little confusing. I'll try to call out when I will, when I will expect you to switch back and forth. Um, so if you have a second monitor, that'd be awesome. If not, uh, I did actually change the colors of all everything on my screen. So um, I got some feedback from a dry run that that people couldn't tell if they were they were trying to click on something and they didn't realize it was actually the Zoom call. It was my my version. So um, everything on my screen is going to be pink. Everything on your screen is going to be kind of gray. All right. Um, I'm going to jump in because I got a lot to cover. So um, the, the first thing we're going to want to do, I'm going to get rid of this. We're gonna to want to open Max if you haven't already, um, and we're gonna open the the project that I sent you. What I sent you is a it's called a Max project. Um, I have it as a as a recent project here. Hopefully, this is the correct one. Um, and you should see something like this. I apologize. Some of the some of the fonts are gonna be a little small on here. Hopefully, you're looking at the same thing. Uh, I'll try to zoom in when when I can. But um, yeah, so. The, the first thing you should see is the is kind of the, the project root screen. Um, and what we're looking at is a list of files basically in this project. Uh, so a Max project is made up of various types of files. Most of them are called patchers. Um, and a patcher is basically like a, it's, it's a Max window. Um, so it's, it's what we're gonna be building our applications in. Um, and then the other content is like media files or code files if you wanna add your own code. Uh, and those things will just kind of poke uh, below the patcher files. Um, but for the most part, everything, I just tried to break things down almost, almost like a slide deck, but everything is going to be interactive. So, so I'm going to introduce myself with the, with the first slide here. Um, so yeah, they already gave me a, a, a lovely introduction. Thank you. Um, feel free to click these links. Feel free to never look at them again, uh, though. The Hackaday IO link will take you to my page, which has a link to the project page. If you forget where it is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to be here. I'm, I'm a big, big Hackaday fan um, and I'm a big Max fan. So I, I, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity to be able to talk about it in this, in this venue. Um, and I wanna get, get a disclaimer out of the way. I, so Max is made by a company called Cycling74. I don't work for them. I've never worked for them. Uh, I'm not getting anything from them for this. In fact, I tweeted at them a bunch of times desperately to try to get their attention and they, they, they didn't, really notice me. So just know I, I'm, you know, I, I don't feel like you have to buy this software. I know you wouldn't, but um, you know, I'm not trying to push this on anybody. It's, it's just a thing. I'm just a fan for real. Um, and I will say too, there is, Max has kind of a, a, a sibling application called Pure Data. Um, they have a, a shared history, but Pure Data is like the open source version and Max is kind of the, the more commercial version. Um, I would have loved to have, have, done this workshop with pure data, uh, just knowing that it's Hackaday and we love our open source stuff, but it, it just didn't really, it's, it's a little bit harder. It's like, it's like driving stick versus Max is kind of like a nice, a nice, you know, automatic minivan. Um, so check out pure data though. Pure data is cool because it runs like Max only runs on Mac and Windows. Pure data runs anywhere. You can run it on a, on a Raspberry Pi. You can embed it in an Android application. Um, you can, I think people have got it running in a browser now. Uh, you can embed it in Unity. It's it's really cool. That's pure data. Um, that's the that's the open source version. And I, I, if anyone's using Linux, that's what I ask you to install because it's it's mostly similar, but uh, yeah, it's not going to be quite the same. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to jump into the first my first Max patch that I'm that I'm presenting to you. Obviously, not counting my my intro here. Um, and if you didn't notice, you can you can click these these buttons. All right. Open up uh, zero one underscore intro, please. Um, like I said earlier, yours isn't going to be 
um, white or pink, it's going to be white. That, that's just to, to differentiate. So um, this is this is maybe possibly hopefully your first Max Patcher. This one is meant for you to play with. Um, we're going to be coming back to this a bunch. Um, and I, I want to another disclaimer. We're going to leave this slide, and you're probably not going to understand fully what's going on. I designed it that way. Uh, this is just this is this is a hook, right? I, I want to just show you some of the things you can do, and we're gonna we're gonna refer back to this as we go. So I'm gonna go through it kind of quick. I'm not gonna tell you everything. Just know that we're gonna we're, we're gonna address most of it um, after the fact. But uh, I'm gonna encourage everyone to just take a few minutes and start clicking around on your screen and, and start playing around with things. Um, you know, these are mostly interactive elements. You can you can change. Yeah, I, just just try it out. See see what makes sense to you. Um, this is a this is just a simple application built with Max. I did this in in a half hour for what it's worth. Um, but yeah, take just take a few few seconds, play around. Uh, you if you if you use Slack for for work, you you probably recognize this parrot. It's a party parrot. Why he's partying? Who's who's to say? Cool. All right. So uh, I'm going to tell you some more secrets about this about this Max Patcher. So this Patcher is currently in presentation mode, um, and what that means is I'm hiding all of the implementation details of of this patch from you. Um, so you you can play with it, you can move things around, you can interact with it, but just by looking at it from this view, you don't know how it's how it's connected, how it how it's programmed. Um, so uh, you know I'm going to. Tell you all how to take it out of presentation mode, and you're gonna you're gonna start to take a little glimpse inside my brain. So, uh, to get out of presentation mode, there's a little yellow icon at the bottom. That it, it, when you hover, it actually says patching mode. But um, you're gonna click that, uh, and you're gonna see a few new things. It's gonna everything's gonna expand a little bit, and you're gonna see some new stuff on the screen. So, this is what programming in Max looks like. So I, I say programming. Um, Max is it's a, it's a visual programming language, um, wh whatever that means to you. But basically, this is, this is what it looks like. If you're, if you're building more complex things, you're going to see a lot more of this. You're going to see spaghetti everywhere if you're like me and you're not, if you're not organized about it. But the idea is you, you see these, these blocky looking things and you see these liney looking things. We're going to talk a lot about what those are. Um, but this is what max programming looks like. So. Uh, again, I'm not going to go over everything in detail right now, but I encourage you to to, to click around um, and and see see what everything what everything does now. Um, in order to reprogram this patch, you actually have to unlock it. Uh, so there's a there's a little lock button down in the, the bottom left corner, or you can command click on a Mac. I think it's Control click on Windows to to toggle the lock on the patcher. So if it's locked. You can't do that much, but if you unlock it, which we're going to be doing that a lot, um, you'll be able to kind of move things around, and and that's actually how you reprogram things. Um, cool. So, um, and also, if you if you want to play around, uh, you can you can this will load in any any GIF, GIF, uh, whatever you call it, or or I think movies. I think you can load like an arbitrary MP3 and MP4 in here and like change the color and stuff, um, but. Anyway, I'm going to just move some things around. I'm going to show you like the types of things you can change and what what programming max looks like. So, um, what do we see here? We see this this on off X button looking thing. We have a, a clock, a, a block that says clock. We have a block that says linear playback. We have a block that says random playback. They're all interconnected. Um, so, watch what happens when I uh, switch. I'm going to switch this little line. I'm going to delete this. And let's put the random playback in there and see what happens. Okay, cool. So that's interesting. Um, let's 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 wire this up too. Let's put the random playback in this third little hole here and see what happens. All right, cool. And then you know, let's do linear playback. Let's let's route that in here and see what happens. Oh boy. It probably looks even crazier over over Zoom, but um, yeah. Feel free to to do the same if you want. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna move on now. I just wanted to to kind of give you a little preview here. Uh, also, this this patch is not very efficient, and your computer is probably uh, 
probably trying to take off right now. I see a question, where's the wire mode? So that's when your, um, your patch is unlocked. So you wanna either command click or control click, and then you'll see the wires. Oh, and you also have to be out of, um, out of presentation mode to do that. All right, let's close this one out. I recommend closing it because it, it, is, it is pretty computationally expensive and it's just gonna run. Um, all right, so I gave you a little, a little taste. Um, it, and this, this is just a demo I did for this particular brand of, of presentation. Uh, there's a lot of different really cool inputs and outputs you can use for Macs, um, all of which are, not all of which, many of which are listed here. Um, but it's, it's hard to demo a lot of these virtually. So um, that I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going back to that intro uh, it, as a as a reference because it's a it's a you know it's a silly demo but it's a it's a pretty complete demo to be honest so um, but yeah these are the these are the types of things you can you can you can use as as inputs and outputs when you're writing programs in in Max um, and it's a, it's a really great way to like mash things together right it's like you 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 want to take some video and you wanna process it in some way and you wanna use that data to send a tweet, right? Um, Max, makes, Max is designed to make that type of thing really easy where you have some big pre-built component, some, some, you know, some input and you have some other thing and you just wanna literally click a little wire and, and drag them together. Um, and the other thing, so what I like about it and what this, this uh, particular workshop is really meant to show is I use it a lot to, to simulate uh, inputs and outputs. So um, if, if you're, you know, you're waiting on some, some piece of hardware to come to, to feed you a, a signal or something, um, Max is a really quick way to, to, to simulate any kind of input or output until you're, you're ready to, to like bring in the real implementation. It, it's, it's a really just awesome toolbox for doing anything on a computer. And it's, it's nice because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's modular. I think it's, a little bit easier to follow for beginners um, for than, than learning to write code. I think you know clicking and dragging things feels a bit more natural um, to, to some people. I'm saying that anecdotally, so if, if you disagree, please tell me after, but um, that's, that's kind of how I feel about it. Um, and, and what I love about Max, and, and I'm trying to demonstrate this with this workshop, is everything you do in Max, you can, you can copy and paste it anywhere else. Um, and Max encourages that, right? It's like, I think as, as programmers, we sometimes feel guilty about how much we, we contribute ourselves versus just pulling from what somebody else did. But Max like leans into that. And so you'll notice like every part of these, these patches that I sent you, if you unlock it, you can, you can change it all you want. You know, you can copy stuff, you can delete stuff. Um, and Max encourages that. Max wants you to just use what's there um, in, in the quickest way possible. And 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 make cool stuff, and and without having to worry about the 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 really nitty gritty details. Um, but if you want to dive in, you you can always you can always go lower and lower uh, if you want once you get comfortable. So yeah, I'm again I'm not trying to speak on behalf of Cycling Seventy Four disclaimer, uh, but that's how I interpret how they design this stuff. I'm gonna look at the questions quick. Why aren't the patches listed in alphanumeric, alphanumeric order? Uh, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, don't read too much into that. I, uh, I was scrambling to, to do stuff um, earlier today. Also, I'm, I'm realizing I'm, I'm probably looking at a slightly different version than the one you guys have. So uh, I'm gonna call out the numbers specifically. It should be the same, but um, please let me know. All right, uh, so let's talk about max objects. Um, and I, this, is, this is like the, the, the lowest level stuff. And I promise you we're gonna get through this quickly. And once we do, we're gonna look at some really cool integrations with like my microphone. Um, we're gonna do some stuff with the internet. Uh, and if you look at that towards the end of the project, you'll see, you'll get kind of a preview of where we're going, but just bear with me. I, I, I'm, I believe deeply that if you, if you learn the, the, the nitty gritty of this stuff, if you learn the, um, the essentials, um, you'll walk away from this presentation like pretty dangerous uh, with, with Max. Um, you know, you'll be able to, to copy and paste code from wherever and, um, and, and build your own thing. So just bear with me as we get through this. It's gonna seem like we're far away from building cool stuff, but I promise the jump from this to the cool stuff is not big. And that's, that's one of Max's strengths. So 
Um, anyways, this is a max object. I'm gonna I'm gonna unlock um, and just click around here. This is a max object. Uh, it, it, this particular one is empty. It does nothing. You can see it has no text in it. Um, it's it's just floating there. It just lives there. It doesn't it doesn't do anything. Uh, so objects have what are called inlets and outlets. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you can see. Um, so inlets are at, on the top of uh, of objects and outlets are on the bottom. And those are just holes that you can connect things to this object with. Um, and you'll notice if you hover over them, you, you get some nice details about what that, uh, what that particular inlet or outlet is supposed to do. Uh, and you'll notice that the empty object is actually called J bogus, uh, which I think is a fun little, a fun little detail. Um, but yeah, so these, this doesn't give you any useful information because this object doesn't do anything. So, other objects, when we get to more, more interesting objects, um, when you want to send things to that object, you pass things to their inlet, you connect the wire to the inlet. And if you want to receive data from uh, an object, you listen to the outlet. Um, and they, objects can have arbitrarily many uh, inlets and outlets, and each one might have a special job. Uh, and you just kind of have to go through and learn what, learn what they do. And that, that's why they give you the documentation here is you can just kind of hover over and see what they what each inlet or outlet does. Um, and yeah, so a max patch, you know, the thing we're looking at, um, hold on, sorry, I keep looking at the chat. What if you pass an out, output to another output? It won't let you do that. Uh, feel free to unlock the patcher and try though. Um, so a max patch is just a, a big pipeline of, of objects, like at its core, some of the objects end up looking different, but at the end of the day, a max patch is just objects connected to objects. It's just this big web, um, and and like that's that's kind of a that's kind of an important thing to internalize. Like when you're looking at a big scary thing, just remember it's all it is is just inlets and outlets connected to each other. That's how everything is built. Um, and just wanted to point out too, like some some something a little bit subtle, I think is. The fact that you can connect many outlets to one inlet and vice versa, um, and so that makes Max really great for um, kind of experimenting without having to change your your patching as you go. So, like if I wanted to add some functionality without changing the existing setup here, uh, I'm just going to Alt drag to copy this object, and I can wire that up, you know, separately. And you'll notice I didn't end up I didn't change anything, so I can I can kind of uh, experiment on the fly and add on the fly without without breaking stuff. It reminds me of a modular synth. I'm so glad you said that because they have a full like getting ahead of myself here. But um, when we're done with this, click the beep button if you want to if you want to have fun with some modular synth stuff. Uh, sorry. So yeah, it, it's it is. It's like a modular synth. You have full control over the patching. You can you can add stuff, remove stuff on the fly. Um, Uh, what's happening inside the object? Where's that code and how can I create new objects? We'll get there. Cool. Um, so creating objects. Uh, so the first thing you got to do is unlock your pat patcher. And if you see lines around the text, that generally indicates you're unlocked. Um, and you just put your mouse wherever you want to put the object. You can either hit the N key or, as I learned today, you can just double click. Um, that creates an empty object. And then you just type the name of the object you're trying to use. Um, this is not this is not a real object. I'm just typing to show you. Um, so if I if I click out of this, it's going to be like, hey, no, that's not a thing. It doesn't give me any inlets or outlets. But we'll get to that. Um, and again, just reiterating, you can copy and paste from anywhere too. So you can just click on one, Command C or Control C to copy, Command C or V or Control V to paste. Um, and you can do that between patchers too. You know that doesn't have to be just within this patcher. Um, so discovering objects. So I told you how to make one, but like, what are you going to make? You don't know what any of them are yet. Um, so there's a few. There's a few other ways to to make objects. Um, the, my, one of my favorites is at the top of the patcher here. You get all these lovely drop downs, um, and you can click and see. There's all different ones available, um, and you just click on whichever one you want to put in, and it'll it'll just insert it, and you can move it around where you need. Um, there's also there's an objects tab over here. Uh, that's a little more overwhelming in my opinion. Um, or you can start with an object, uh, an empty object, and 
like say I want an object that adds two numbers together. If I just type add, um, you can see they, their, their search functionality is really great and they give you a bunch of options. So uh, I, I have found a bunch of things that I was looking for just by, just by kind of typing in words that I thought were relevant. But for the most part, I use, the, I use up here. Um, learning about objects. So how do you know what these objects do? Um, so let's, let's just pick, pick one, an arbitrary one here. This is the button object or the bang object. Um, so there's a few ways to learn about this object. One, I already told you, you, you hover over the inlets and outlets, and that gives you a, a, some documentation as to what that's doing. Um, the other thing you can do, and this is, this is, in my opinion, one of my favorite things about Max, you right click and you open help, and you get, you get their, their full documentation, all of which is completely interactive, right? This is just a patch. Um, and so, and they generally do an amazing job of demonstrating how to use any given object. And of course, because it's a patch, I can literally just copy the the, the objects out of the help uh, the help window here and just put it right inside mine, and it'll it'll work. Uh, also, uh, you know, their their online documentation and forums are are amazing. Um, in fact, this honestly, most of the stuff I'm going through now, they, they're, they're like intro to Max is, is kind of similar. Um, tweaking objects. So uh, there's a few options here. This is for if you want to change the appearance or, or sometimes you want to change more advanced behavior. Um, yeah, right click for, for help. Um, so uh, you can click this yellow button and it'll give you some, some attributes that you can change. So like this particular object, you can change the colors of. Um, it has different prototypes with different styles, all that stuff. Uh, but uh, the, the really useful window is the inspector window. So you click on an object to select it. And then there's this I button over here, uh, to open the selector or sorry, the inspector. Um, and this is, this is a little overwhelming in, in my opinion, especially if you're first starting, but you, you can kind of guess what some of this stuff does, right? Like, uh, you know, these colors, right? If I change this, I can kind of guess what's going to happen. Um, yeah, so they offer a lot of customization. But yeah, we'll, we'll poke back into the inspector window later. Um, okay, I'm, I'm trying to be conscious of time here. What do I got, a half, half hour left? Yeah, all right. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about the most important objects in my opinion. Um, and then we're, gonna, then we're gonna start playing around a bit more. So the first object you should know is the print object. It has one inlet no outlets, and basically it takes any data in and it will print it out for you in the Max console. So that's that lives over here, um, right in the middle of the patch on the right. And you open that up and you might see a bunch of noise or you might see nothing, but we'll, we'll see what it looks like in a second. Basically anything you feed into here will, will show up on the right. And um, that's very helpful for debugging. If you don't know like what, what's coming out of some, some outlet, you can just hook it up to a print object and you'll, you'll see it happening. The next object to know is the message object. Um, so that holds some like a, either a command or you know, some data that you just wanna store temporarily, uh, but it also doubles as a button. So if you lock your patcher, command click or control click and click it, um, you can see it, it kind of indicates like, hey, you're, you're interacting with me. Um, and if we look at its outlet here, uh, it says it send, the message outlet is the message result. So what this does, this message object does, when you click it, it just sends this data out of that outlet. So, um, so perfect demonstration, let's just hook those two up together. You can see the outlet of, of the message is going to the inlet of print. Uh, and when I click this, now we can see on the right in the console, we're printing whatever message is in here. And if I wanna change it, I can unlock, I can double click and, and I can type whatever I want. Uh, and again, I can click here and uh, yeah, that's that's message hooked up to print. So that's your first that's your first like patch cable connection. These these lines are called patch cables, by the way. Uh, so you know, congrats. That's your that's your first your first patch. Um, okay, uh, so just quickly another thing with messages that, that's kind of interesting. Um, the right inlet actually sets the content of the message. The left inlet 
is used to trigger the message. So the left inlet behaves the same as if you were to click this thing, um, but the right inlet uh, sets the message. So if you, if you lock it and click, you can see it's changing the content, um, but since we're not triggering it in any way, it's, it doesn't get printed. But then I can print it here. Cool. Um, one last thing, I want, one last patcher or object I want you to know about is the patcher object, which is which is a little confusing. Uh, but basically, this lets you wrap any like set of objects as as a uh, as its own little mini patcher. It's called a sub patcher. Um, and so, if if I if I click on this my message, you see you see it'll print. You said colon my message. And the reason it does that is because if you double click this patcher uh, object, it actually opens up my own little custom thing that I, I made. And so this is just a nice way to organize things. Like if you have a bunch of objects that live together as their own like logical unit of things, I like to wrap it up in a, in a patcher object and just have it live by itself. Um, it, keeps, it keeps things clean. Cool. All right, still cruising so we can get to the fun stuff. One last, one last uh, kind of dry run through here. So we're opening up the data types uh, patch. Um, and so I'm just gonna tell you what types of data, there are, there are a few different types of data that flow through these gray patch cables. Um, so the first one uh, is, is called a symbol. A symbol is just a word, uh, is, is how I like to think of it. It's generic text with no spaces. So those are alphanumeric characters, um, so letters and numbers. As long as there's, there, there are no spaces and at least one um, like A through Z character, it's a symbol. And uh, again, I have it hooked up through the print window. So you, just so you can see it printing out. The second type uh, is, is an int, which if you write code, you're, you're probably familiar with this. Uh, that's short for an integer. So that's a number that's just a whole number, negative or positive from you know, super low to super high. We're not gonna worry about the restrictions, but um, that's, that's, all, that's all it is. Um, so no, no A through Z characters, it's just, it's just a number. Um, and yeah, something I wanna call out uh, early on is that this message object uh, hex, I actually don't know how hex behaves in here, but sorry, the message object um, holds, can hold any, any type of data, which can get confusing. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna use the message object over and over again, but each of these examples is demonstrating a different type of data. So far we've done symbol, int, the next one is float. So that's a, that's a number with a, a decimal point, uh, if you're unfamiliar. Um, and again, arbitrarily low to arbitrarily high. Uh, and sometimes one thing that threw me off for a while is sometimes it's displayed with, with no zero appended. So if it's just 1.0, it's just one dot. Um, yeah, so that's a float. The next type of data, which, is, which is, I think is a little more interesting is called a bang. A bang is just a generic event. It's just a moment in time. It's got no other data tied to it. It's just, it's just bang, it's a trigger. It's a, it's a, it's a moment in time, that's it. Um, you, I like to think of it as just like a button click. Uh, so you click it and it prints out as the word bang, which is confusing. Um, but it's this object, which you'll, you'll use a bunch is, is, is the button object. It's, its job is uh, output any message as a bang. So this, this object always outputs just a bang. How is the data type set? What determines the difference between integer 99 and the word string 99? Um, that's, that's what's confusing. Um, it's really just how you type it. If you want the string, if you want a symbol for 99, you have to put quotes around it. If you don't put quotes and it's just a number, it'll interpret it as a, as a number. It is not, it's, it's a little dangerous. Um, and the last type that I wanna show you is the, uh, is the list type. A list is just a combination of one or many, or I guess more than one of the above data types uh, separated by spaces. So it looks like a sentence, but it's actually a list of, of things. Um, so this is a list of nine things. We have the zero dot, this, 
is a list of nine things bang. And that again, it just prints out normal. Um, yeah, you can look at the, so there's uh, some other types I listed at the bottom. Basically, if you don't see a gray patch cable, that means you're dealing with some more complex data, like an audio signal, or uh, this is how you'd send video around. I'm not gonna touch those. Just know if you're not dealing with the gray cable, you might be, you, you might have to look some other stuff up. Cool. Don't save. Um, yeah, all right, let's 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 go back to our, let's go back to the intro. So a list is what separates, spent, a list is when spaces separate the words, yes. Though if you, if you have numbers separated by spaces, it's a list of numbers. But the key there is it's separated. If there's spaces, that means it's a list. Um, all right, so let's, let's just revisit this quickly and see, see if things make a little more sense. Um, so, so you can see these, these objects that I have here, uh, they have the little P in front of them, meaning that they're sub patchers. So if you want, you can double click into those and you can see uh, what I'm actually doing under the hood. Uh, I'm not gonna explain it in detail, but just know that I, th those were objects that I thought were worth kind of wrapping as their own thing. Couldn't find a type patch. Uh, yes, type, you're looking for route type. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, cool. So P clock, we'll look at that. That's just a you know it's it's a it ends up just being a metronome under the hood. But the point is like I have decided to wrap things up in sub patchers, and uh, we know that this object we've seen this object is a is a bang object, um, and so yeah, when we click it, this we know we know exactly what's happening on this cable, and it even tells me it's a bang. Um, what else? Wait, I'm trying to think if we've learned anything else. Oh, we see video flowing through this little cable down here. Uh, and then, yeah, we have some on off functionality. That's a button. And if we look at this cable, uh, it's just showing zero or one for on and off. Cool. All right. We'll come, we'll come back to this again. I just wanted people to, to look at this again in, in, a, in a slightly new context. Um, all right. Actually, let's let's skip ahead. Let's let's look at the more the more some of the more interesting uh, things we can we can do with this. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just slide all this stuff down. I I, I really wanted to emphasize. Like I, I know I spent you know we have 25 minutes left. I spent a lot of time talking about like this really really low level stuff. Um, but now that you know how to connect inlets to outlets, like you know how to program in Max. And as long as you can read documentation about what these objects do, um, and you know like, oh, this is expecting numbers or this is expecting symbols, and you know what those things are now, uh, you're, you're, you're like ready to go. So let's, let's, let's dive ahead and look at like, um, let's look at this, the sound input uh, patch that, I, uh, that I, I sent to you. That's, that's number 10. Probably have like 15 minutes. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go quicker then. Um, cool. So um, I'm I'm gonna show you this this cluster of objects here is uh, is is for an onset detector, which means it's gonna listen to my audio. I'm gonna options, audio status. Make sure I gotta just switch my microphone. Um, I'm gonna turn this microphone on, and so this onset detector object, its job is it takes some audio and it outputs a bang. And so you watch when I clap. It, it does a pretty good job of detecting, you know, audio onsets. So what I can do, I can just take, take this as it is, copy it, and I'm going to make, I'll just make the bird dance with it, right? I'll put it in this patcher. I'll do, go here. Right? So... My point is, you now have this onset detector object forever, um, and and you can use it. You know what a bang is. It's just a, it's just an event. Um, you can you can send that out. Uh, you can use it wherever wherever you need to. You that's that's it's yours forever now. I, I give it to you. I actually didn't make it. Uh, I I did credit the the person here. I'm still giving it to you forever. Cool. Um, let's let's do another example here. Um, 
uh, what else do we want to do? All right, let's do let's do Twitch input. So this is this is fun. So uh, I have a Twitch account, barely. I have a Twitch account just to demonstrate this. I'm going to put it in the chat. If you're on Twitch, uh, feel free to to sign in. Where is the chat? Okay. Um, and what this patch does is it listens to my chat and forwards those messages into my max patch here. So I'm just going to start it up and I have full instructions on how to use this, but this is just for the, for the demonstration here Let me make sure it worked. Uh, yes, it did. All right. So if you start sending me messages on Twitch, where is the chat? I don't even know how to use Twitch. So if you send messages with the format um, parameter space and then a number. So for example, parameter, you know, 100. Uh, this should start reacting as you guys, as you guys type and I'll, I'll make sure where, where, where do I chat? <laughs> there it is. All right. Um, so I'll put this over here so you can see. So I'm going to just type parameter zero or no, I'll do 20. And you, yeah, there we go. Thanks. Whoever's doing this. Uh, yeah. So parameter 120. Um, so you can use this, you can just copy and paste this and, uh, like you can make your own Twitch plays application, right? Like those are uh, Twitch plays. Pokemon is a thing. Forgive me. I'm, I'm not a good millennial. I don't know any of this stuff. Uh, but now like, let's, let's actually play the bird with, with Twitch. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do, so, so I'm going to create an object called the send object, which is, lets me send, uh, send data between patchers. I'm going to call it send bird. And then in here, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to create a receive object. I'm going to name it bird. I'm going to spell bird correctly. And now as I type in my Twitch chat here, parameter zero, uh, I'm, I can change the color using Twitch. So if you all wanted to spam me, yeah, there we go. There we go. 9,000 9, is beyond the range. It maxes at 127 uh, as, a, as a hint, but Cool. So again, you know, I, I, I feel a little guilty about not being able to really dive into what all these things are doing, but I, I want to emphasize, like, it doesn't really matter. Like, just, just copy this and paste it where you need to. Um, when things are, when, when things are well documented, which I'm sorry, mine, my objects are, are not, um, like, it should be, it should be obvious on, on how things work. Like, this is, this object here, uh, it, it's just, it's just a, a number that comes out of this. It's just a, a whole number. Um, and so you know how to use numbers. You've, you've seen that already and you can pipe that wherever you need to need to go with it. Sweet. Um, all right. So now I'm going to give people time to play around a bit. Uh, I created a, um, let me close all this. I created a, uh, a, a playground patch um, and you can open that and it, it's pretty big. So just spread it around. But basically these, I, I took a bunch of my favorite objects. Um, a lot of them are, are UI objects like this, this color picker down here. Um, it's still an object. It still just has inlets and outlets, but they, they provide some cool UI to help you produce interesting data with it. Um, so I'm going to give everyone like five minutes. I'll try to answer as many uh, as many questions as I can, but for now, just uh, keep this patch locked and and play around. And when you're ready, unlock it, and and you can start to you know you can connect all of these things together, um, and and see you know and see what happens. Um, I especially love this one called Drunk. I highly recommend playing around with that. You get some you get some fun stuff. Yeah. So uh, yeah, play around, ask, ask questions, um, and I will answer them.
Is there something like a patch repository? Yes, but I, I can't link you directly to it because I, I I don't really use it. I, I don't. There's there's definitely there's like a there's like Max has like its own little app store now. If you go into Package Manager, um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff that people people put this people add things in here all the time. Um, and then there's definitely stuff you can download online separately, and uh, or the objects the object menu over here has everything in it. Are there graphs? Yes, there are graphs. Um, I don't think I have any in this demo, but like the closest thing I have is this uh, this color picker, I think. Uh, which, yeah. Also, I rigged to obnoxiously change the color of the of the patch. Uh, so ultimately, these can be saved to canned applications. I think I may be missing what Max is intended for exactly. So most people use Max, as far as I know, um, for 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 installation work. Um, so, you know, you, you put Macs on like a Mac mini or something, and if you have some interactive exhibit or a display or something, it just kind of lives there and runs, but, 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 but you can absolutely, uh, export your, your patches as a standalone application. Um, it'll bundle the Mac's runtime in with it and you can upload it. I know you can upload them to the, the Mac app store. Or you can, you can, you know, host them wherever you want. And they'll be downloadable by anyone, even if they don't have Max installed. Um, people can download your your program and use it as a standalone application, which is a really, I think, a really powerful feature. Um, can you write extensions for Max in something like Python? I don't know if Python is supported, but yes, you can do. Um, you can write in C, JavaScript, Java, um, and with JavaScript, they actually have a. Um, Node.js built like it's built in, and that's actually how I built the the Twitch plays Max thing. Um, you can you you can run Node as as an object within uh, within your within your patcher. But yeah, they have they have specific objects for for Java JavaScript. See, you can even do signal processing with with those, which is which is really neat. Like you can just write a little chunk of signal processing in C and and save it as an object on your on your patcher. Uh, oh, I'm sorry to hear about getting laid off, but hopefully, hopefully you get another job where where it would be a perfect fit. Yeah, kiosk stuff. That's that's like exactly exactly like strike zone. Can comments be linked to the object they refer to, or are they just dumb bubbled? Dumb bubbles. Yes, you can totally link them. I got lazy uh, to link to link objects together. You just select multiple ones, right click, and group group objects, and that'll keep them together as you drag them around. There was a question earlier that may have been lost about how well patchers play with Git or version control in general, I would guess. Yes, good question. So I actually have this, I, I have my my repo up with this project. Um, under the hood, I think it's just, I think these are just JSON files. So I don't know, like you can definitely use Git. I don't know how, I've never done, I've never done any kind of like merging. So I don't know what happens if people branch and try to try to combine. Um, I, I imagine it might be kind of ugly, but uh, at the end of the day, under the hood, it's all just text-based files. So um, there's, there is that. Yeah, I cracked open um, your Twitch plays or one of the random files in there that is a max patch. And you're yeah. right, it's just JSON. It's just JSON, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty readable too, if I remember. It just like tells you the name of the object and like where in the patcher it is. So, yeah. so maybe, I don't know, maybe merges wouldn't be that bad. I, I, I take that back. Any limitation, how big a project can be, number of objects. Uh, <laughs> I haven't hit it yet. I, 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 I recommend you Google, like Google image search uh, max patch and just see like the absolute crazy stuff that people people put out there. Um, I, I think what, what, what draws me to max and I, I think others too um, is because it's so simple, it's just objects and wires. You can you can program things in a way that may not be efficient, but makes sense to your brain. And um, and sometimes you get a glimpse into people's brains, and it's just like I wish I wish I never I never saw that. What will a Max runtime can project run on? Are Raspberry Pi and other Linux distros supported? Uh, no, that's so pure data. That's what you're looking for if you want to run on a Raspberry Pi. Um, 
that that will it's the same thing you can still you can still bundle it up as a as I, I don't know if it's an executable but you can bundle it up in some some way and absolutely run it uh run it how does max handle order of operations multiple objects operating in parallel good question um i think the only time you really have to consider timing is when you have multiple outlets or you have an outlet sending data out of multiple patch cables and I'm 90% sure the data will go through the patch cable on the right first and then the left. It should be effectively instant, but I, I, it is, it, there is a timing aspect, and which is crazy because if you just like rearrange where, how your patch looks, you could actually affect the behavior, which is not, not ideal. Yeah, yikes, yikes indeed. Um, yeah. How did the uh, conversion, oh. So go ahead. How, how do the conversion pathways look like, or how do they look between um, Max and Pure Data? Uh, I I don't have a great answer. I, I to be honest, I wish I was I wish I was cooler and used Pure Data more, but um, yeah, I don't. I can't give you a good answer there. Why does the screen go blank when you choose presentation mode? Another awesome question. Uh, because you have to explicitly add add objects to a presentation, and so if you right click on an object uh add to presentation is an option and then when you go into presentation mode that'll show up all right um i want to demo some other stuff we got about 10 minutes left um yeah what's most but we talked about sound let's do video quick i think this one's really fun um and if you follow me on twitter i i, I made a stupid post about this um so this patch what it does is it takes some video input um, it finds, it tries to find a chunk of the color red and it will track that in your screen and it will give you an estimate of where it thinks the red, the red is. So I'm going to just open my camera here, open, I'm going to start it up. You should see my camera, hopefully, maybe, uh, uh, we don't like it today. Possible it's being consumed by uh, Zoom. Yeah, you know, I tried it yesterday and it worked. Um, whatever. Uh, if you go to my Twitter, <laughs> I show you. I show a demo where I'm actually using a, a sign to execute key commands. So I, I when when I pay, when I detect the color red in the middle of the screen, then I instruct Max to simulate a bus a button press, which which you know will, would mute my would mute my camera. Um, I'm, I'm bummed this isn't working. I don't know what I don't know what happened here. Let me close. Yeah, no, uh, oh wait, I think it is, it might actually be working. No, all right. I had my red robot already and everything. All right, moving on. That's the first first demo fail, that's fine. Um, networking, I, I think is a good thing to talk about. Um, so if you wanna deal with the internet or if you wanna just deal with, if you wanna have Macs running on different machines on a network, um, you can build like, you could try to build like multiplayer games and stuff. There's this great object. It's just called net.maxhole. Um, and this is when you see MXJ, that means it's using Java under the hood. So if you don't have Java under, installed, this, this might not work, but um, maxhole is the object. And it's, its entire job is to just take some data and spit it out to every other maxhole on your Wi Fi network. Um, so if you have another computer running, uh, which you may or may not just trust me that when you, if you open this patch in two different places on the same network and you send something in, it will show up on, it'll show up everywhere. So it's like no configuration. It just, it just finds its way where it needs to go. Um, I've, I've, I've found that to be handy. Um, other objects. So the max URL, this just makes web requests. If you, if you, you know, if you're familiar with, um, HTTP requests, so I, I've used this for, for Internet of Things things, right? You can, you can make a web request on your local network to turn off your lamp, or you can use um, if this then that web hooks to, to, uh, to turn off your other lamp or whatever the hell else you have hooked up to if this then that. Um, but yeah, you just, you just pass it a URL and it will, it'll fetch it and it'll give you the output down here. Um, 
It worked when I turned off Zoom camera. All right, good to know. I don't seem to have an outlet. Yeah, so the max hole, if you don't have an out, outlet on the max hole object, that means that, that Java is not configured correctly. Um, so you need to have Java 8 installed. Um, and I, I, I have a link elsewhere. If you go to the Hackaday IO page, there's a link for, for how to install that. Um, there might be some other configuration issues with Java, but if you don't see an outlet, that, that means it, it couldn't actually load that, that object. So sorry about that. Um, let's do all right, so keyboard out, output. This one's really fun. You can have Max drive your computer. This is very dangerous. You have to give accessibility permission. Uh, you could accidentally delete something or, as I say, email your boss, whatever. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demo this. I'll demo this in the chat here. Uh, but basically, I'm going to connect the, the, the outlet here to the inlet of what's called Autobot. Um, and it will type as me the, the, the message fun but dangerous after eight seconds. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to go quickly to the, to the chat. Maybe it didn't work. All right, maybe demo fail number two. Text file, maybe? No. I don't know. You get the idea. It's 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 for the best, to be honest. Uh, this is this is this is dangerous. Uh, it's it's again, it's using your accessibility settings. If you're familiar with the Java robot library, which uh, any of my coworkers, my current coworkers on here uh, will be, uh, that's what it's using under the hood. So it's it's a pretty standard way of of controlling your uh, of your computer. Um, yeah, cool. Um, all right, I, I have just a few minutes left, uh, so I want to talk about MIDI I/O and Arduino I/O. This is Hackaday. We like hardware. Um, so MIDI, if you don't know, MIDI is, is, a, is a way to control. It's mostly used for, for musical instruments or, or you know, controllers for musical instruments. Uh, I'm here to tell you, you can use MIDI for any damn thing you want to. Uh, I think it's a great protocol to use if you're if just to get, if you want to get controllers, buttons or whatever, sending data, uh, just use MIDI. Even if your application has nothing to do with, with, uh, with music, just use MIDI, it's great. Um, so I have a MIDI controller plugged in to my computer here. And you can see as I turn the knob, um, the value of this knob shows up with the, it's called the control in object. Um, and I didn't have to configure that. I literally, you just, you just open the control in object and it will just pick up all your MIDI devices and start spitting out data immediately. So I could, I could, I, I don't have time, but I could drive the bird with this, uh, with this controller. Um, and then if you're using Arduino and you want to, if you using Arduino and you don't want to use my little MIDI hack where you just use MIDI for, for all types of communication, you can use serial, um, serial connection. So that's just over USB. Um, I won't get into too much detail here. If you're, if you're pretty used to using Arduino, I hope you're used to using serial, uh, you know, data comes in the inlet that gets sent to the Arduino. Anything that comes out of the outlet is received from the Arduino, um, yeah, it's there for you. It's ready to go. Uh, definitely dig into the help for this one. They have it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty heavy duty. It's heavy duty enough where it's actually going to beach ball me. Yeah, um, yeah, scary stuff. But if you know what you're doing, it's super powerful. Uh, yes, you do need to add fields for that. Um, Feel pretty good about what we covered here today. Uh, I, I hope. I hope again. Takeaway. I, I don't. I don't expect you to, to to understand what any of these things are doing. But I hope again. The main takeaway is it doesn't matter. Just copy and paste it. And as you get more comfortable, as as you as you get things working, um, you know that's when you open the the help. That's when you open the inspector. That's when you Google it and and you you can dive in. Um, so you start as high level as you want. Just just take objects and and play around with them, and and. You know, as, as you as you get comfortable, just get you can go deeper and deeper and deeper until you're you're just writing C code, um, and and then you just get out of Max once you've hit that point. Um, yeah, uh, and as one last flex, since it's Hackaday, I'm going to show you. I, I 
if you're a hardware person, I don't know, I, hopefully this is not just all my friends on this call. Um, I actually modeled a, a shift register uh, using just like native Max objects. Um, so basically I'll, I'll start it up. Um, and if you, if, you, if you dive into the, the shift register object here, you'll see I'm actually modeling the flip-flops. And if you dive into those, I have the, the down to the NAND gates. Um, and so that's, that's another thing I love about Max is it's, it's a way to, to, to program and, and to do things virtually, but it feels, it feels kind of like working with hardware um, in a lot of ways, you know, it, just by the, the kind of asynchronous nature and, and you know, inlets, outlets, and, and wires, like it's kind of, it's kind of hardware-y. So um, yeah, that's all I got. Great. Well, thank you very much, Guy. Thank you.